Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemag TV. In today's video for Photoshop we're going to be jumping into the filters and specifically looking at the oil painting filter. Now if you're not used to the oil painting filter it does exactly what its name suggests. It'll take your image and make it look like an oil painting. So I'm going to take you through how the settings work, what you need to do to get great results to make sure that the simple tweaks will get a great looking end result to work with. If you want to take it one step further, we're also going to take a look at how we can add in textures so you can get a much more realistic looking end result. Finally, if you're the kind of person that's comfortable working with the natural media brushes in Photoshop, you're going to find this effect, this filter, is going to be a great starting point where you can take your skills, apply those to your image and get fantastic looking end results. So, without further ado, let's open our image in Photoshop and take a look at using the oil painting filter. So I've loaded my base image into Photoshop and we're ready to start dealing with the process of creating this oil painting effect. So this is a good candidate for it, there's lots of good detail in it, good texture should show up really well when we create the effect. So all we need to do is first of all turn this into a smart layer just so we can edit it if we want to afterwards. So let's just double click to convert this from the background and we say OK and we'll right click on that and we're just going to say convert to smart object. So now we can do a lot more with this because it's a smart object. Okay, so we've done that. Next thing we need to do is just come to the filter menu. We're gonna come down to stylize and the option we want is oil paint. When we do that, it's gonna open up the dialog box that starts to give us some options for how we can control the effectiveness and the different styles we can apply using the oil paint filter. Now this is broken down into a couple of different options and you'll find at the top it has preview. By default, this is unchecked, so you will only see the effect of this small window in the actual panel itself. I'd recommend click preview then you can see it on your overall image and get a better understanding of what's actually going to happen when you finish making the changes. Okay so you can see we've got a couple of settings for the brush and we also have an option for lighting. Let's zoom into 100% and let's position this somewhere we can see a little bit better the detail of what's going to happen. Okay so the stylization if we start to bump that up you'll see we get a much looser, much bigger brush strokes. It kind of gets really quite abstract in there. So the higher we go, the more abstract that'll become. Now next up, we have the cleanliness option. If we start to take that down to the left-hand side, you'll see what that does is it gives us more detail, more contrast in the edges of the colors. So we take that right the way over to the left-hand side. You can see we've got a lot more detail, a lot more contrast in the trees, in the water and so on. Whereas if we bump that up to the right-hand side, we get a much less contrast in there and we have a more abstract image, even more so with the stylization. So when you're working with an image, it's really about finding that balance based upon what you're looking for. So for me, I want to bring the cleanliness back down because I like the detail and the contrast in the water. The stylization, if we bump that up, like I say, we get a more abstract look. So I tend to keep that a little lower so we can get more detail in there and create a more realistic effect. So if we take a look at the rocks, for example, and the water, you can see this gives us a really good effect. It's kind of a nice balance between the painting effect and the original image. So if we uncheck preview, you can see we lose some of the detail in there. Same with the rock. But what we do get is a much more painterly kind of effect. Now next up, we've got the scale and the bristle. Now these kind of have more of an effect based upon the lighting option. So let's just go to the sky where we can see the lighting option in action. So if you take a look, you can see there's a lot of texture up in that sky, and that's based upon the lighting. So if we uncheck that, it'll disable that lighting effect. So we lose the sort of three-dimensional effect that's applied to this based upon what the brush strokes would have if you had a light source in there against a real sort of oil painting. So you'll see if we check that and we adjust the angle of the lighting, then you can see the effect changes. If we bump the scale up, you can see the actual amount of the brush strokes actually increases. And the bristle detail is how much sort of edge contrast you get in this. So in other words, how rough the texture actually looks of the painting. So if we bump that right the way up, you can see we get quite a, a detailed effect. And if we take the scale up as well, you can see we start to get even more so. Obviously, like I say, if you uncheck the lighting, then that kind of kills that effect completely. Now, what you can do is you can adjust the shine option as well as the angle. So if we start to bump the shine up, you'll see we get this kind of crazy effect as if you've got a really strong light source that's highlighting everything and reflecting off the actual texture itself. So for me, I personally prefer to keep that off. I like the effect. And it's just a case of finding that balance, like I say, between the stylization and the cleanliness then. But if you want to use the lighting, then that's where the scale and the bristle detail come in. 
So let's just say we've got this to a position where we quite like it. So let's put a little stylization back just a little bit and we'll just adjust the cleanliness to give me some detail in there. I kind of like the way the water looks and the rocks look. So we say, okay, that's pretty good. I like that. We've got an effect that we like. So let's just zoom back out. So there's the overall oil painting effect applied. And that's a great basis. Now, obviously, you could leave it at this point and you've got a pretty cool looking effect. But there are a couple of things you could do if you wanted to. We're going to take a look, first of all, at applying a texture. There's a canvas texture to make it look like it's actually been painted onto a canvas. This gives it a little extra sense of realism. What you could also do, especially if you're the kind of person that's pretty good at dealing with creating artwork and using the brushes and the natural media effects that Photoshop gives you, is you could use this as a basis and then you could start applying and painting your own extra things in there. So this is a great way of getting a great starting point and then you can enhance and tweak as you want. That's beyond the scope of what we're going to do in this video, but what I am going to show you is how we can apply that canvas texture. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. We'll rename that to Texture. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the fill, the paint bucket tool. We're going to make sure that's selected. And at the top, then you can see normally you'll have the option for foreground, which will choose the foreground color. What we're going to do is we're going to choose pattern. And what we can do is click on the next little icon that'll show all the patterns we have installed. Now, I've put a link direct to the textures that I've used in this. They're completely free and it gives you a range of canvas textures so you could follow along with this. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to choose one of those textures. Let's try this one to start off with. So we give a click. And we just close that down. And what we're going to do is making sure we've got the texture layer targeted. We're going to click in there and that'll create a fill, a repeating texture pattern of our canvas. Now, obviously, it looks a bit silly at the moment because it's overlapping the top of the image. So what we're going to do, we're going to come down to the blend mode option. And we're going to change that to overlay. And you can see now that immediately picks up the texture of the canvas and overlays it onto our image. So you can see it probably looks a little heavy handed at the moment. So what we can do is we can easily select that and just use the opacity slider to simply drop that down until you get an effect that you're happy with. So around 40% looks pretty good. So you can see we now have a texture applied alongside the oil painting effect, which gives it a more realistic appearance. So there we go. That wraps up this video tutorial on using the oil painting filter in Photoshop. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button and be kept up to date with all the content we add every single week. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions on future videos, please pop those in the comment section below. Read everything you post and take on board every comment and suggestion. Well, until next time, take care.